So now by this point, hopefully we can all see where Build to Rent started, the genesis of it here in one of our neighborhoods in Jacksonville. We see why it makes sense. Where is it going? Right? Build to rent was not a thing when I started to invest in 2006. Is it going to continue to be a thing? Well, the thing that I will tell you is whenever you're trying to think about where something is going in the future, you want to follow the money. Right? You want to follow the dollar bills. You want to follow the institutions. Right? The big players are going to tell you how solid and proven a model it is. And JWB, well, you know, we're we're a big fish in a small pond, right? I'm talking about the big fish in the big ponds, right? So let's see what they're doing. I'm gonna take you on a milestone timeline as well. I'm gonna take you back again from their perspective and the money that they started to put into it. So in 2011, hedge funds started to acquire and renovate properties, right? They saw the same thing that we saw in 2011, that prices were low and they formed these home rental companies very similar to what JWB does, and they were acquiring and renovating these properties. Now, they saw an industry that was fragmented and largely run by mom and pop investors, and they thought that they had an opportunity to professionalize the industry and make a ton of money. So over the next six years, they invested over $36 billion, with a B, billion dollars, in over 200,000 rental homes in the US. Following the money tells you that they really believed in it. Now this was the first time in history that Wall Street was backing home rental companies that were formed for the, for the purpose of acquiring, renovating, renting, and delivering a return on single family homes. Prior to this, it's typically done in the commercial space, in the multifamily space. So this was a big deal and is still a big deal. But again, they saw what we saw, right? Home values had come down. They saw this as a buying opportunity and they saw this huge amount of inventory out there. And they said, this is the time to create a new asset class. And Wall Street was all in. 2013, they started going public. American Homes for Rent was the first company to go public and to do an IPO. Now their response was tepid at best. It was not great. So what they did is they backed off a little bit from their acquiring and they focused on operational efficiencies because at this point they had bought hundreds of thousands of homes. It was the first time this, and they had no clue how to actually operate. And they focused on those operational efficiencies around that time. Here's some of the news articles that happened, right? American Homes for Rent prices IPO at $16 a share. Soon after, American Homes for Rent falls 2.5% after their IPO, right? It was, it was not the best response. Fast forward to 2015 to 2017, you've got consolidation happening now. You've got these big players that are starting to gobble up some of the smaller players, consolidate in the effort to increase their returns for their shareholders. Now, there are two players that own 60% of the rental home market across the US, 60%. Invitation Homes and American Homes for Rent. They have focused on achieving operational efficiencies and also part of the reason they were so excited about this back in 2011 is that they expected rents to rise, which they have. Here are some of the major players in 2015. It was Colony American, Starwood, Progress Residential, BLT. You may have known or heard or seen some of these names in the headlines. All of them got gobbled up and now became part of two that control now these aren't there it's not only two companies out there but these two control 60 percent of the marketplace at the same time we saw things changing as far as rental demand so home ownership rates at an all-time low 63 percent it's down from 69 percent in 2005 and that is a big drop and that's just increased rental demand but here is some of the most telling news so it was a big deal when you had Wall Street jumping in to form these home rental companies. And it was a big deal when they went IPO and went public, right? Now, here's another iteration that proves the model out, okay? Builders typically build new construction homes and do what with them? They sell them. They sell them to owner occupants. Builders 
generally speaking, historically, do not build new construction homes and hold onto them for rentals, okay? But that was the old way. Now they are. Builders are now building new construction rental properties and holding onto it because they believe in the model as well. 2017, there were 37 homes that were built by builders and held onto for the purposes of renting out, doing their own build to rent. That number jumped up 16% in 2018, year over year, 43,000 homes. Now that's not a huge number of homes to be honest, but this is the first time it's ever been done, okay? And this doesn't count all the homes that they built and have sold to other home rental companies or investors out there. It's not included in this metric. This is the first time and it's growing. It's something to pay attention to. 2018 comes in. American Homes for Rent is the darling of real estate. Excuse me, is the darling of Wall Street when it comes to real estate. Their shares are now up over 40% from the time that they went IPO. Big money is flowing to single families. Some of the big names that I know you know, Morgan Stanley, BlackRock, are increasing their holdings in the companies like American Homes for Rent because they believe in it as well. Invitation Home spends over $200 million in the first nine months of 2018. They've got a whole lot of money and they're searching for more assets. That is what is going on. Which leads us back to build to rent. So you've got existing inventory as we stand here in 2019, that is scarce, right? You know it, you've read the headlines, you've probably experienced it. It is hard to find inventory to make the numbers work. Prices are rising, it's challenging on inventory to acquire it. And even when you acquire it, you got it's, it's a slimmer deal. You gotta come up with new ways to accomplish and feed the demand from Wall Street. And you've not only had this proven out from single family rental companies, but now builders are getting into it, right? Even more proven. You'll see some big names like Toll Brothers, Lennar investing millions in build to rent partnerships and holdings for themselves. Here are some of the headlines. Build to rent market housing, build to rent housing market explodes as re, uh, investors rush in. Toll Brothers, others turn to build to rent. Taylor Morrison is the latest big home builder to bet on single family homes. Build to rent still booming. So here's what we know. It's a proven model. There is a tremendous amount of money right now that is searching for single family rental inventory and inventory is scarce. Acquiring and renovating is tough sledding right now to meet hundreds of millions of dollars of demand. New construction has proven to be lower maintenance and vacancy costs, so it's better for the end investor, which is why all these Wall Street guys and all these home builders are jumping in now, right? Institutions and home builders are jumping in. Do you think it's here to stay? I think it's here to stay. And you know what, this slide, it says it's here to stay. So there you go, it's officially here to stay. No, built to rent is here to stay, right? There's money behind it. The assets, uh, uh, the, the assets have been proven, Wall Street's all in, home builders are, are slowly becoming in, and it just makes sense. I mean, I can tell you from 2011, our clients are extremely happy with new construction. It's one of those things that it doesn't, you don't need to sell it, right? It's just like, it just makes sense if you're gonna be investing in rental properties.